welcome to the fourth episode of Explorations in Funk. My name is Oscar Jordan, and today we're going to discuss major chords. We'll be breaking them down into smaller bite-sized chunks to provide unadulterated skank and discuss our religious devotion to accenting the first beat of every bar, the one. So put in your mouth guard and bite down hard. You're going to learn something. Now the cool thing about funk, especially in classic 70s funk, there's this really cool tie to jazz that you can't say that about rock or metal. And that's because they use a lot of uh, big chord voicings like major seventh chords, major six chords, major ninth chords, uh, minor seventh chords, minor ninth chords, stuff like that. And this just makes it pretty. Uh, now, let's take an A major seventh chord like this. We're on the fifth fret of the uh, E string here, five. I'm taking my ring finger, and that is on the 6th fret of the D string. My pinky is on the 6th fret of the G string. And my middle finger is on the 5th fret of the B string here, so I get... So, yeah, I can play the whole thing. That's great. Or I can play an inversion of that here. All I'm doing is I'm starting with my index finger on the, the A note of the D string on the 7th fret. And I'm just taking a bar with my middle finger across all of these. That is on the 9th fret. Very similar to our, um, our first inversion dominant. 7th chord that we did in the first uh, episode there. Okay, now let's take another chord. Um, that would be a D major 7th. That is, uh, that's the, your D note here on the A string. On the middle finger is on the A note of the D string here. Middle finger, that is on the 6th fret of the G string. Pinky is on the B string of the seventh fret. And then there's the root, obviously. So if I put those two together, and if I move it up a whole step, I get an E major seventh. So if I went. There's a ton of R&B songs and blues and funk that have those uh, chords in it where they're just uh, playing really pretty stuff. Now when we funk it up, we don't have to play every single note. We can just, you know, play parts of it. So if I play the second inversion of uh, an A major 7th, then I can go to the 4 chord, which is the D major 7th. And I can go. And all I'm doing is I'm playing part of the, the chord. I'm not playing every note of it. I'm just playing these two notes. So I might play these three for the A major seventh, and then these two notes for the D major seventh. So if I'm like funking out and I want to cover that while the keyboard player is playing pads. I'll just There's been a ton of songs like that that use that. And the idea is that, you know, when you start learning all these big chords, you got to know them all, of course. But in funk, less is more. The less that you play, the better. It's more about the percussive attack of it. And in filling in around the other spots and you don't want to be redundant. You just have to stay out of everyone's way and find your place so that you're not 
bumping into the bass player with too much low notes. You're not playing every note of the chord because the keyboard is playing that. You are finding your little rhythmic spot and sometimes it's going to be one note and sometimes it's going to be two notes. But you have to make that creative choice because you are an artist and you have to find out where you fit in. All right, here's the part where we get to the nitty gritty thing. This is the big secret that they don't teach you in the other funk videos is that it's all about accenting the one. And I won't go into the long history of why that is, but if you ask James Brown or listen to any of his music, it's all about accenting the first beat of a bar. That's where you come down hard. You listen to P-Funk, any funk band, and think about what they're doing and listen to it. It's all the accent is on the one. Not on the two, not on the one and a half. It's on the one. But if you can play percussively off that one and accent that one when you're coming down, it's going to sound really good. So I'm going to give you an example of uh, just how you should do that. And uh, you've got the beat. One. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm exaggerating that first beat of the bar. So I'd go two, three, four. that one and it just makes all the difference in the world. If I didn't accent it, it would just sound blah. Listen to Prince on the one. Bam. That's oh. the secret. All you got to do is listen and do it. Just do it. Just take my word for it and just do it because it's all about nailing that one, grooving, and uh, that's going to really push the music and, and give your music a sense of funkiness that you do not hear in other genres of music. And you really want to you know, when you play funk, it, it needs to distinguish itself from other forms, and that's one of the things that distinguishes it from other forms, is nailing that one. And that's the crux of the biscuit.